Hey, Bass Geek here, and I'm going to show you a trick to walking the dog topwater baits in clear water that is going to get you bigger bites. And I'm going to show you something Lornette sent me. So Lornette sent me a box of goodies, and I want to share them with you all. And I want to start with some square A's. Now, the square A's are probably more my buddy and shout out tackle junkie i just don't do a lot of square bill fishing where i'm from but these are some pretty cool square bills and it's always good to hang on to them when i get to go up to tackle junkies uh place and do a little bit of fishing so uh or when i go down to my buddy joey's and get to do a little bit of fishing because man that's a square bill country down there anyway so all that being said let me check let me show you these these are in some new colors this is alabama herring baby bass orange belly good old fire tiger oxbow brim foxy shad green pearl shad now that's a nice translucent color might work in some clear water with some chalk sartreuse black scales purple pearl au electric shad apple red crawdad foxy mama mad crawl now this is something i am super jacked about and this is great lakes finesse check these out guys this is their four inch drop worm and this is in frosted shad this is clear shad this is smoke clear purple flake. Next up, we've got the flat cat. Now, one thing I love about these Great Lakes finesse is they're all matte finish. And in clear water that I fish, man, that is such a key. This is frosted shad in the flat cat. Clear shad, iridescent, and smoke clear purple flake. You guys know I'm gonna love these come winter. Right now, when they're out there chasing those tiny shad, I'm telling you, these baits right here are going to be money. I cannot wait to put them on ahead and go catch some big bass. This is the 2.75 drop minnow. Smoke clear purple flake. This is pro grape. Spicy melon. And last but not least, Crush Shad. It's that time. It is time for a new Bait School bag. Check it out. The Bait School bag, it always comes with some really nice waterproof bag that you can carry your gear in when you're fishing from the bank or, you know, wherever. Some cool stuff. My buddy Mike behind the camera, he is jacked up about this little Rebel Frog. Kind of like a little whopper plopper called the uh, Rebel Buzzing Frog. As always, man, you gotta have one of the finesse spinnerbaits one quarter. This is the War Eagle. It's that time for a popper. This is a hula popper. Top water time of year, a great clear water bait, tiny torpedo. One of my favorite baits in the world, a swing head jig. This is the hard head from Gene LaRue. As always, guys, Yum makes some incredible Helgramites. This is natural. We've got a couple of different baits we can put on that hard head. Right here is the Gene LaRue Hammer Crawl Minnesota Flash. Next up is, of course, the good old Biffle Bug Jr. You can't go wrong with that. Biffle Bug Jr., 3.5 inch and dark watermelon candy. Now, guys, you get a bunch of other stuff. You get some stickers. You get, you know, a discount on your next purchase. But here is what we're gonna be talking about today, and that is how to walk the dog. I'm gonna show you how to do it with a bait caster, how to hold your rod and reel. Me and Mike actually kind of went through this just this morning because I want Mike to catch some bass on top water. It's fun. I mean, it's probably the best bite in the world. So let me show you what I was showing him earlier today and a few tips that will help you catch bigger bass. All right, guys, so I'm going to talk to you about walking a bait. And this is one of my favorite baits in the world to walk because it's one of the last true what's called the cigar style baits. And you can tell that by 
the nose and how smooth it is. It's not gonna make a lot of water, you know, disturbance in the water. It's not gonna make a lot of splash as it comes through the water. And that's what I like because this bait reminds me when you tie a loop knot on it, a lot of a glide bait because you can get a very wide walk and glide, especially on a day like today when it's glass slick calm. One of the things that I want to show you and the very first thing that me and my buddy Mike talk about is we talk about holding the rod. So to me, a lot of guys are going to hold it right here, but to me, you just don't have the ability to get a good hook set into a bass and have control over the bass if you're behind the weight distribution, the pivot point, if you will. What I like to do now, I've got, you know, pretty good size hands for the size guy I am. Generally, I like to put the trigger between my pinky and my ring finger. And I'll wrap my finger around the front of the reel. What this does is it allows me to move my wrist in a very natural action, the way your wrist is designed to move. You gotta hold your rod correctly. I'll show you the position I hold mine. Now Mike holds his a little bit differently, but that's all right. You do you and whatever's comfortable at this point is what you're looking for. You don't wanna cause undue stress on your wrist. Now, a lot of guys go in a downward motion. To me, that's just not the natural way your wrist moves. It moves more like this than like this. So I can get a little more movement and a little more snap out of my wrist when I'm walking the dog. To make the cast, like I said, you're just holding it like that. You're just gonna throw it out there. Use your thumb to stop it so not a lot of line comes off. Now that the bait's out there, what you wanna do is you wanna reel up your slack, but try your best not to move it. Every once in a while you're gonna move it a little, but try your best not to move the bait. Then you're just gonna start snapping your wrist. So when you snap your wrist down, you wanna feel that bait, and then you wanna point the rod tip back to it while at the same time reeling your slack up. So the key is to make sure you snap it on slack. You're not pulling the bait. You're snapping that slack. You should not feel the bait until you hit it. You feel like you're hitting the bait. Whack! That'll get it to move to one side. And then once you point back, you're giving it that slack back. That'll get it to move to the other side. Here's a big secret. Everybody and their mama wants to come out here and throw a walking bait at 100 miles an hour. Don't do it especially not with this. This shines in conditions that you see just like it is right behind me. Sunny, calm, slick conditions, right? This is where you want this bait. And it shines over deep water. You've seen me catch a ton of bass doing this right here. Two tricks, two simple retrieves, is if you're throwing it up shallow, as soon as it hits the water, move it quickly. Then stop and start working it slowly as it comes out over deep water. Big bass are not going, like truly big bass, are not going to run this bait down a lot of times unless they're active. So what I like to try to do is get those non-active big bass to bite. And 90% of the time, combined with the loop knot and the right bait, my head and one knocker, it is literally a slow methodical cadence, even a stop and go with a slight pause at the top of every apex. They just can't stand it. They have to come up and see it, and you're moving it just long enough so that they're going to hit it. And when you pause it for that two to three seconds, and they're looking at it, and then it moves, it's done. It's done. Now that's for large mouth. You got small mouth and spots, just work the crap out of it. Stop and go as fast as you can go. They'll eat the piss out of it. All right, guys. So that's it. I hope that helps you walk the dog. I hope it also helps you keep from getting carpal tunnel from walking the dog. Because if you're doing it like a lot of guys with a shorter rod and it's straight down, your wrist just is not designed to move like that, guys. It's just better to move it from this direction, right? Because it's natural. As always, questions and comments in the comment section below. You guys know I love to talk about bass fishing with you. 
I love catching big bass on a topwater. You guys have seen it for years. Like it if you like it, don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you guys ring that bell. 100% Water Squad, you guys know I love you. And as always, you geeks, you geeks rock.